Hi, this is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. It's a bird. It's a plane. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to the Krypton Report. The All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I am your host, Man of Tomorrow. My name, and with me, my better, the Man of Superman of James. Hey, hey, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Great to be back talking about Superman again. Oh man, like got yeah. something brand new to talk about. Yeah, we just so. Kind of horrible, like, uh, and you know, I want to say, like, it's kind of like a horrible day. I don't want to get into it. Like, it was on my grandfather passed, and they passed away apart, uh, a lot of stuff. But this trailer dropped that day, really cool, like, bright, happy, <laughs> like, kind of pumped up a little. Uh, feeling. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you, Rao. <laughs> that that boss, boss, I love. Um, <laughs> but we are talking about her fuel trailer for Superman blow it out. And I gotta say, man, I think the trailer got everybody by surprise. It was a surprise, the dropping, you know, it coming out that day. There was, I didn't see any announcement. I think that was it, oh, here's, here's what I find. I was talking with a friend of mine. Quick side. Um, Black Light is out. And we have yet to for the There's been no trailers, promos, nothing. Black Light. It's like. Interesting. Right and like that, up for that, you know? yeah. Because it was like a new season, but kind of like a new show at the same time, you know. Uh, but this had a nice little slow build. I mean, here we are. So as of yesterday, twenty third, here a month today, fourth, we're really blessed. Way you know, we have the first show. I'm glad that you know, they gave this, you know, like. Build up my interest about in, in six months. <laughs> you know what I'm like? Yeah. Ah. Um, right. Well, you know, they were back a few years ago, they were releasing trailers like year and a half out stuff. And then just to keep up interest or the fact that it's even coming out, you know, they released so much in the terms of TV spots, trailers, and stuff like that repeatedly. And they give away so much. And that's and not TV, that's movies. Still, like, first thing. you only got to get people hyped when it's coming out. So, okay. People like us are going to know. General audience, they only, <laughs> they only need to get hyped when it's coming out. So, I want to say, like, um, so let's, let's start. This is going to have a nine minute. And I'm wondering, it seems like that's just the pilot. It's not like a, a first two episodes together. It looks like the pilot, like nine. Uh, that, and, it, and it feels like maybe the way they. It's like a TV movie. Like, um, you know, we talked. Or, so, like, remember when we talked about, like, Lois Clark, how the pilot shot it? Shot it on film, money in it, uh, in case, like, you know, they didn't put up a movie. But, like, this was ordered to see, you know, and this look. I looked up the director. Um, he's done some more, like, higher end type stuff. He's done a couple of features, like, 
nothing like he did the most famous Age of Adeline film. Then like a couple of uh, Riverdale. Uh, did a movie called Celeste Best Forever drama comedy. Andy Hamburg. Um, and then the director of photography, Gavin uh, Brothers. He's done The Witcher, Black Sails, Marco Polo, Vinci Demons. So more like high cinematic elevator. Mm-hmm. Excellent. You know, so I mean, it doesn't feel like there's just generic, like, no offense, but like, stuff like no team yeah guys whose job it is to get a get an episode together uh shoot it in 10 days have it ready to go when like what is it 12 13 what's yeah. the turnaround yeah like, like shooting is supposed to take like eight to ten days max or something and there's nothing for an wrong episode with like, i don't i don't think like you know like we've seen like uh oh man it's leaving me right now but like the guy who directed pilot for girl you know, had direct other CW properties, direct Smallville. Yeah, was that uh, Glenn, was that Glenn yes. Winter? Yes, or? yes it was. Um, so that there's was, a couple of names there. I think Glenn Winter was the one. And I, and I always joke like Glenn Winter is both directed uh, two different Superman. The other one. Yeah. Uh, got the Smallville pilot, David Nutter. Also Boy. There may be Um, but just saying that, I mean, visually, looking at the trailer, it looked very in of steel. Like the saturation of color, the, the, the house, the arm looked like it looked a, a small. Uh, yeah, it's, it definitely is very cinematic looking. It does look a little, little more, a little muted, you know, not, not too much. I mean, it's like just looking at the opening shot here, um, of trailer, I got it paused on my screen. Uh, it's the shot, it's across, um, wheat field or, or this has been a plowed, um, cornfield. And, you know, so it's, it's a brown field just like the strip of grass out field and then and brown on the other side and and it's cloudy and the and the sun is going down behind That's the clouds cool. and the and the uh and the horizon so you just got the sun peeking through the clouds at different spots it, it, but yeah i mean and like so let's talk a little timeline we know this is post crisis We know they proposed to Lois after the L. I don't think they were married. I think were they, were they married? I have to go back and do watch Christ, Christ part. So I think by then they probably were married because they had John. Because so I think between Else World and Crisis, mm-hmm. she was pregnant in Else Worlds, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, because he saved her, he rescued her. She was pregnant in Else Worlds. Was she pregnant or was Bitsy pregnant? No, I'm pretty sure it was actually Bitsy that was pregnant yeah. during Else What it was. And then okay. after Else Worlds, that's when they went to uh, stay with on uh, our. I'll have to revisit it. It's been a while. Um, I've watched all of But. I'm wondering, yeah, I haven't rewatched Elseworlds in about a year. And I'm I'm wondering, you know, like if maybe we'll have some sort of contact at wedding stuff like that. See the wedding. You know, and uh, you know, we know that at the end of Christ like Christ has started get a baby. And at the end of Christ they pulled a pin. They aged up probably a twin son. And I feel like that's a common seed of thing where uh, taking one character, split the character. Uh, yeah. Because I feel like 
you know, just looking like at the actors and stuff, like the kid, the actor that's playing Gordon, to me feels more like John from the comic compared to the actor, the actor playing John, who ironically is the famous Gordon. <laughs> right. <laughs> that has to be that has to be interesting on set. Just at some point he just kind of breaks character or somebody says Jordan and he just responds to it as opposed to <laughs> Yeah. Um So so that's I feel like that's kind of what we get here. Um Well, you know, we got we got one year ago crisis and and John was just born. Yeah. So I mean, how, the, how, how end, much farther does this take place after Crisis, but, plus what changed because of Crisis? Well, I mean, listen to the end of Crisis, as your twin son. So, yeah. and I have to go back, because to me, right there, just saying that they're, they're up to something, they're doing something, to me means that they've been a Like the time has been pressed. So, are, so are we blaming Bendis too for the aging up of John and yeah. the show? Dude, look, that's what they do in the comics. <laughs> we're do here. That's what I said. They pulled a Bendis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I feel like that they just use Christ to stay. You know? Like that's, and I'm I'm like okay with that because that's part. Of the chance well, to I mean, to... right, um, right, absolutely. Well, you got to think about it too. If you think about the timeline, just for Crisis, I mean. He was Superman when she arrived at 13. She was at least 23, 25 when she came out as Supergirl. So for 10 to 15, you know, 10 to 12 years or so, um, he had been Superman. Lois and him had been together at some point for a long time. I mean, so finally by that time, and that's, that's quite a long time for him to be Superman. Lois and Clark, you know, I mean, for them to get together and, you know, to have children and stuff. So you kind of retooled it back a little bit. He was already Superman. So maybe they got married, you know, back just before she became Supergirl instead. Yeah. You know, and had and had children. Yeah. I'm saying, like, I feel like it's part of the universe retelling us some of the story of what happened with Christ. What's what's different in this world now because than we, it was when he showed up on Super? Because after that, after Christ, is yeah. I think I think that's I think that gives us a a good um a good way to make this show its own thing outside of what it what it what he was what they were on Supergirl and the crossovers. I mean, usually it's already done. You know what I'm saying? Basically, it's already, Absolutely. it's already hit us hard. I mean, even just using this new farm. And I mean, also, if we take a step back, no spinoff from from the Arrow or Arrowverse show, okay, has ever started their own show with a smooth transition. And what I mean by that is, if you go back, look at the episode of The Flat, when Barry's introduced those two episodes, and then you match those up with the pilot of the Flash, it doesn't perfectly line up. There's, there's some difference. In it. Mm. Um, It'd be interesting to go back and it's been a while since figure I did those it. out. It's been a while since I did. Like I did a because um, I know they had it close. I know they had it fairly close in like real time, like when he was struck by lightning in Arrow to the time the pilot started, how much time he was in a coma and stuff. I mean, they, they I, I remember that. I thought that was really cool. They did. But it's just like, go back and watch watch the episode of Air and watch the pilot of the Flash. There's a few things where you're like, oh, okay. And I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But it's like something about him coming back and, you know, like going to his office compared to like Air for the Um And then, mm-hmm. I mean, look at that one. We have the Elf World that was produced and her show picked up, but it's so awkward. Like, when did this happen? They referenced it, you know, the crossover, but you're like, when did that take place during the course? So, yeah, in the nine episodes we got before, eight or nine episodes we got before Crisis in the first <laughs> first season of your series, 
when did the other Elseworlds happen? <laughs> exactly. So I mean, like, like her to like her first eight episodes took place over a year and a half. Yeah, exactly. That's what it <laughs> should have been. But I, I was thinking about that enough. Um, so you know, if there's a little rock to start at this, that's, that's how shows work. The only one that had smooth is, but I watched it a long time. Even then, it they had like the legend. You know, anyways, um, I feel, okay, look back. We see that basically it looks like both Clark and my prediction on this is Morgan Ed buys the Daily Planet Fire. Because there's been, we know Morgan Ed is supposed to appear. There's been, and we know him more recently in comics, yeah, uh-huh. he was the, the head of. GBS and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, probably having feelings of him in the past. Want to get rid of him. Because how else? I mean, even if you're downsized, like, don't get rid of your best support. No. No. So, yeah, I, they, I figure it's a, yeah, probably an acquisition of Daily Planet or something. Yeah. So, um, Go back. It looks like Mom Park. Both. Out. Yeah, parents gone too soon. The interesting thing, though, is the um, two teenage sons with extreme, extreme or severe anxiety. I. Uh, you know, at all along, I hope it's good. Or almost Superman 78. I mean, the, the shot of this driveway up to the house and the barn, it's a little reminiscent of Superman 78. Right. Man, when I wouldn't give to have that little, that little stretch of land right there. Nice farmhouse and a barn. So, as a quick <laughs> side note, we would, as, uh, oh, he lives really out, uh, all like old highway out, out, and his family there, by, and they have farm, farm, as, out. And I, but it's not far. We live, we live out, but we live like far. Right. It's all of yeah, forty-five minutes away from everything. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. <laughs> um, but I really, feel it has honor and God. All of them. like we already talked about, like the beneficial aesthetic, a uh, little bit of close Clark, uh, and I feel like Tyler self reminds me more of like uh, yeah. Um, I mean, in my opinion, you know, I feel that. Dean Cain Superman, uh, his, his Clark Kent attitude, um, uh, or his Clark Kent, the way he's himself, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? He's yeah. not putting on so much of a personality, he's just himself yep. as Clark Kent. I like that better than, you know, him playing a bumbling type guy. Um, I feel like I, I prefer that. Um, the reason, the reason being is because then like at all times, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's playing some at all times. He's either playing a bumbling dude or, at, or, or, or Superman. Like he's never, he never just gets to be. Yeah. I feel like George, Dean, Tyler. 
fall into a category. And kind of Henry, but I feel like Henry never really got. He didn't get a time floor for us. No, no. And like his, all, all we got was all we got was mainly Clark. Um, his Clark thing dealing with the problems of 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 you know knowing he's an alien, but not knowing where he came from, and only you know only what he you know things he can do, but you know still feeling like so much of an outsider, uh, and then we only got family, we only got Lois, we didn't get to see him at the Daily Planet, right. we didn't get to see him around people, right. and then in Batman vs. Superman, the Ultimate Edition, you get some of it, but especially the theatrical, they cut all of his Clark Kent stuff out. Right, and like, his, even his Clark Kent mostly is Lois and Perry, and then the little bit of except people... For, he, except for his Batman missions. Yeah, I would say the people he goes after when he goes to investigate about Batman, but even then, like, he doesn't have to play it up. And even Superman, his Superman even doesn't interact, like, one-on-one -on -one with a lot of people. So he kind of, like, is in that category, but kind of, like, on his own. But Right. Well, I like it when he gets to, I like it when he gets to be himself. He gets to be Clark. He grew up as a person. You know right. what I mean? He didn't, he grew up as a person. He gets to be Clark. That's his life. When he gets to be Superman, he gets to be this larger than life. And he gets to be himself, but he gets to be himself being able to do what he can do and uphold the standards and the ethics and morality that he believes in. And he, and it just, you know, gets to elevate himself to another level. Um, which is, which is this series, you know, we talked about before, like Lex Luthor, the drunk prior of Lex, is if you look at the timeline of Lex's story, this is the farthest on that timeline. And in the same regard, that on Superman, I, this is the farthest. Here. Which is about time, saying 80 years in the future, you know, 80, yeah. 83 years in the future. We really and... didn't have to do an origin. <laughs> we didn't have to start getting, we were able to get farther in his life. That's what we needed. Characters that were all pretty, like, you know, you're born, you already know it. You know, it's like just come eight. Yeah, but yeah, as I say, by this time it's genetic memory. Everybody knows <laughs> the super, the story of Superman. Uh, so, uh, in the trailer, about you know, we have General Sam talk about children, simple, wait, and I wonder if General Lane knows if we're at a point where Lane. Right. The very interesting thing, the very interesting thing that's coming up next is it looks like there's a case of probable kryptonite. Yeah. And then somebody in an armored suit standing over it. Um, we get no hints of, we get no hints of, of villains or anything in this. Whatever that armored plot. suit. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't get any hints of any villains or anything in this trailer. Um, I mean, we see a little bit of kryptonite. We see that armored suit. We see a quick little snippet later on. Looks like somebody's flying at him, hitting him or something. So we don't know what's going on here. But um, it's all like, it's all Clark's life. Um, it's all pretty uh, much from Clark. Lois. Yeah. I mean, Lois is kind of narrating. And, and even the shots of her, she kind of looks like she's looking on. But then, you know, Clark, he's interacting with Sam Lane. He's interacting with boys coming up. It's going to be interesting to talk about what, what their, excuse me, what their quick interaction is. Um, he's interacting with Lana here. Yep. Obviously, something's going on here, and yeah, he has the line, line like, oh, sometimes I wish I could get drunk. Like, and, and, and he delivers it so good. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Just this trailer definitely has a step up from from anything he's portrayed in Supergirl, except for his first episodes. We'll get to a episode. uh, you know, the one thing about this episode, like, from a, a visual standpoint, I feel like, okay, we go back to the first show, 
they a little bit they Tyler himself has crowd and uh always five o'clock and it feels like first jump kind of like super big kind of guy about up here in this it looks like it's Tyler Um, here's what was funny as watching the film. Like, you know, you know, it's like a five o'clock dad rock. When you look at anything, you always have five o'clock. Yeah. Um, and even in the next scene, we have up close. You got a square jaw. It helps, it helps to extend your jaw. Yeah. Um, even this next shot, we have fine. Um, and I just thought, oh. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a little bit more, like, it, it's one of those things like, you know, for like a one or two, like the face, I my brow, look smaller, I can like, Uh, yeah. Did you see I mean, that? unless you play Lex Luthor and you gotta shave your head every five days. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's <laughs> one of those things. Oh no. I'm trying to other So uh oh, I, okay, it's one my turn. So it's it's kind of uh, it definitely feels like has I feel like that it's some almost new that that so uh. And then we, yeah, it's still very, a little around how it, a little, uh, yeah, the moves. suit looks like it's a little looser. And then, and, and then I just saw another, um, picture on, social media of uh, him on, on set in the suit and uh, like he's like waving to people and the suit looks a lot looser looks like it's he's able to move in it so you know I'm sure that there is I'm sure that you know he has at least a suit he can move in yeah. as well as a suit that looks like really good for him just to walk and stand in yeah it's interesting you know? when you get into like uh, like on the flat, talk about how so there's a special hot for how because hold mask off, let it fall back, right? But mask they had for when it goes off, right? Right. For, uh, like so, uh, yeah, for, for, for movies and TV and stuff, like, they have stunt suits and they have suits for specific issues, for specific things like that, like, move mask and, like, specific suits for specific shots for what they're doing, you know? And the look, never. Then we get to the house. Like part of the farm. Uh, and then get get talk about like and like yeah um, the dark haired son um, that's, that's Jordan steps up, that's Jordan yep. okay um steps up uh like closer to him and says we've seen it like 
You're, you know, you're not Superman. We've seen him. <clears throat> Which is interesting, you know, in the show, like, you, you just, they're just roll, rolling with the idea that, you know, he's made that separation and he's hidden that, you know, from them. They don't even recognize that their own dad is Superman. Looks like a first fight. Um, uh, uh, got a black. Yeah, Superman's in like a warehouse or something. Like it's a lot, like a fifty-five second. Is kind of my first uh uh really Alex. Yeah. Wow. It's it's really nice to see them going into this, taking, taking this show seriously. Hey. Um, I mean, the CW, the, the DCCW started with, with Smallville, you know? Um, and for a lot of the, for a lot of that show, it, it was serious. You know what I mean? Being what it was as a CW show, a WB show, uh, with the, the teenage drama um, that permeated too much of the show, but <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, and then and but you know it still had Superman stuff, but and then obviously Tom Welling didn't, didn't wear the suit, and it ended when he became Superman. Like now we got a show, finally, ten years, ten years since Smallville's been off the air, getting a Superman show back on television, on the CW. And, I, and, I, and, he's in, and he's in the middle of his career. It's late, later in his career. And it's, it? it's being taken seriously. You yes. know, uh, the, the trailer has a very serious tone to it. Uh, I mean, we know that Lana is in... Uh, well, Lana's husband, at least, has um, some some problems. Um, she she's having problems in her marriage with his attitude and whatever things. I mean, we'll see how that goes. I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe he's alcoholic. Maybe I mean I wouldn't put it past if he got abusive or something. I yeah, don't. I don't know. Like from Superman. Uh, I think issue two, I mean, Earth One, where he grabbed the guy, his paper lies, like, where he dropped it. Right. Like, is it is it bad that I want to see if, like, the guy going to get on his part? Yeah, that would be awesome. And the guy has no idea what happened. Uh, I don't think they would go in um, as bad as, like, like a love crime thing. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I don't think, think so. I think that that's gone. Um, I I would not put it past um there being some like 
flirting or some um, like Lana, like you know, loving Clark from a distance. Oh, that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for being direct, like I, I would, I would assume that at this point in in Clark's life, you know, him and Lana have kind of gotten over their their thing for each other. You know, they're mm-hmm. friends, they love each other, but it's not that anymore. You know, and and, and Clark is married to Lois, and they have children. I, I don't see that love trying being <laughs> being a thing um if if they do it will severely impact the show in my opinion i agree. Do not need to do that i i i agree that you know if you want to do support honest but maybe what stout on would have had the path i don't yeah. see Clark. It, it, it's it's like it's like back early on, like when Clark and Lois got together and they're in in Metropolis. You know what I mean? Like Clark is friends with Cat Grant. They're not lovers. They're not. They're colleagues. They're mm-hmm. friends. That's how they are. I I expect Clark to have that same way because you know without without anything like Red Kryptonite or something, Clark wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be. Um, Chasing Lana, right? Um, in in a love triangle sort of. Way. And the um, other thing is, it's very. Um, uh, but also, it, like, Lois are so exactly. It's not like you have to go with the trying to hide, and it that's gonna be really great. More of a full on moment with Lois. Um. Yeah, so I mean, I'm. This is gonna be one. I probably, I'm gonna buy. As like, uh, and then I'll end up buying some. Oh, this is my shit. But I, uh, I feel like this is. I've always said, you know, Smallville was a big part of me, but. Smallville came out when we were in high school, you know, and right, kind of like right. it was that like, oh. and now I feel like it's Clark, like you know, I don't have teenage, but I have children. You have your your kids are closer <laughs> to being teenage than mine are. You know what I'm oh, very close. <laughs> Both so, of my children are are right on the cusp of puberty. You, <laughs> you know, so, so like even you, like this, this is the screen that speaks to you. Yeah. So absolutely, uh, that's it's crazy that that. Smallville spoke to us then when we were that when we were that age because we were the same age as Clark uh, growing up watching Smallville and now we're like <laughs> the same age as Clark now <laughs> in Superman and Lois yeah exactly so like I feel like it's like much like I like Black Light it really, like being older have being a father trying to be something more at the time I feel like this is going to speak that same way. And be it. Trying to be a best dad. Keep that you've got extra. Like, paid. So, and I mean, it's also kind of funny, like, in a weird, ironic sense that this year we're getting the Snyder Cut and Superman and Lois. Because when Tyler first appeared on Girls, it was the same year as Drop. <laughs> So it was another yeah. like, double dose of Superman. So like we're kind of getting a double dose of Superman of, you know, Superman and Lois. And then yeah. uh, cut. And the other thing is like Superman, Superman and Lois is supposed to be like 30 yep. Oh, really? Yeah. So I, I, I'm i cool with that. Like give me a, a strong, tighter story. Absolutely. Um, then stretch it out. Like. Yeah, that- I'm 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 much more satisfied with a very strong, solid 13 hours, give or take, uh, worth of content than 22 hours where 10 or 12 of it is filler and and dramatic iron. <laughs> yeah, 
you know, I like cut out a lot of like stuff. Like make this the show. Like you know how each one of the CW shows talks about kind of for a little bit of different demographic. Make yeah. this the show for us. Our demographic. It's a little bit older. You know, uh generate like you know, this isn't like much but it is I'm like this is like a show that everyone can watch, but at the same time, like, it's really... Well, this, is, this is for the people who've been following Superman who are our age. Right. You know? Who's, in that time frame. You know, even who if... grew up with Dean and, and, and uh, um, Tom and Henry and Brandon. Yeah. This is, like, Superman. I don't know. So, I have a lot of... I... You know, my thing is, I like Tyler and we'll talk more about it. I feel like then they kind of, they wanted to have him around, but they had a right, kind of wrote him. Uh, uh, less than, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of found ways to put him in the background, kind of being there to help out little bits here. Uh, this is his time. Uh, Absolutely. I was going to say something about the, um, Snyder cut as well. Um, I mean, we, we're finally getting Henry back as as Superman, um, the way we the way we should have seen him mm-hmm. um, coming back from the dead, and <clears throat> and that's great, you know. And I wanted to see more of Henry, but we're getting Tyler here. He's gotten to play this Clark before, but now he's getting to make it his own in his sh- in a show in his own show. Yep. Um, He's going to get a certain amount of hours. He's going to get a certain amount of time playing the character. And we've discussed how the TV people, you know, they get to play these characters a lot longer than they do in the movies. Um, They really get to delve and expand into the character and the stories and everything. I mean, at this point, I'm I'm already probably, you know, everything's subjective. People will call me, call it blasphemy, but I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm prepared to, Go it, come out of Justice League saying that Man of Steel, BBS, and Justice League are my favorite trilogy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's what I'm prepared for. I, mean, I Man of Steel and BBS are my top two favorite um, movies in the DCEU. Uh, we got Snyder coming out, a Snyder cut coming out, and and Snyder's one of my favorite directors. Uh, so. I mean, we got that coming out this year, and then, yeah, we've got this coming out, and I can't wait, like, one month to see this, and it just seems like they're, that that Superman in this, he, he looks like the Superman he's doing, being the Clark Kent Superman that we, that we like, that we want to see, you know what I mean? He's, he's taken seriously, he smiles, he's happy, he loves his family. But he's still, what he does um, weighs on him and and he takes it seriously. But I think by this point, you know, he can, by this point, he can handle it, you know. He can handle the weight that he carries. And it doesn't mean that it doesn't, you know, affect him from time to time, you know. We see him uh, a little little sour or, or depressed or anything like that, but... I think he comes out of it just fine on the other side. And I'm excited. I'm wanting to Tyler bring uh, now the series basically. Uh, he's one of those actors that first think like, okay, him. but then you're like, okay, kind of watch. Okay. Like, like, you know, it's like, not exactly who I would have picked. You know, I'm like so far. Um, yeah. What do you think? Well, yeah. Well, you know, we've talked about it too. Like since his debut, um, they they've written him in a they've written it. In my opinion, they they wrote it wrong. Um, being that, uh, like they wrote him so that way he he was weaker. Mm-hmm. Um, they they wrote him. Uh, in such a way where he was um, 
pushed aside or pushed down to raise Supergirl and other characters up. Um, which I think the way it was written was wrong because back in the 2000s, um, when Supergirl returned, when she came back with um, Jeff Loeb, um, when they wrote, when he wrote um, Superman, Batman, um, Supergirl, uh, the story that Superman, Batman, Apocalypse uh, was derived from, when she came back in that era, she was speculated and things like that, that she was more powerful than Superman. Like, give it her age or whatever, she metabolized yellow sunlight better. Um, she was more powerful than Clark. She was more powerful than Superman. Um, obviously, like, attitude and things like that. Those, those types of things, um, attitude and maturity, like, would hold her back from being able to achieve what he could, you know, mm -hmm. except for in, like, specific specific bursts. But, I mean, like, they could have used utilized that to elevate Supergirl as opposed to, like, push down Superman to elevate Supergirl. Yeah. They should have just elevated her as opposed to pushing him down. So he got a short end of the stick the farther it went, him coming in, because they were writing it wrong, in my opinion. But um, I think with him being the central focus, that'll be different. He's not going to get that. Um, we're not going to get that feeling of push down. I, I think he's going to be the Clark we saw in the first one, where he's, um, where he's strong and confident, and people look up to him like they did in the DEO when he first showed up. Yeah. Because they've, they've tried to hint that, like, you know, one of the greatest things, like, in Elf World for Oliver and Perry, Oliver kind of, like, put stuff on his chest and everything. Like, yeah, that was a like You know, and, like, you know, everyone, there's a reverence for him. You know, but then, don't always. So. I'm excited. I mean, we could keep going, but I am, uh, I'm ready. Absolutely. I can't wait to, I can't wait to discuss the pilot here in, in a month. Probably watch it two or three times before we hop on to talk, to discuss it. <laughs> like, pardon must be like a right after, like, oh my God, it's finished. Okay, let's stop. Um, like, I mean, if they really, really wanted some sweet, you know, they could do it on February 9th. No, so my birthday. Because this year, birthday. Friday, so, um, you know. Well, you know, the thing, too, is this show, when it's over, will go to HBO Max. This show is way out from the Netflix deal. Yep. Um, just like Batwoman, like Stargirl, like uh, that other Riverdale spinoff or something like that. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's not the spinoff. Uh, that was another CW show that... Yeah, they're they're going over to HBO Max. They're not. Uh, this, this isn't this isn't going to be a Netflix show. I think that'll be. Um, I, I want this to be like like show or something like, like kind of where like caught up. You know, I'm like, hey mom, watch. Uh, definitely. Yeah, I. You know, I watched Lois and Clark with my mom growing up. Um, we watched Smallville uh, quite watched, a bit. Yeah, we watched, um, like, the first season time... of Smallville with my mom, and after that, the TW drama type of it. Mm -hmm. it. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I mean, so there was a time, there was quite a while where we didn't have cable. Um, you know, yep. I bought movies, my mom bought movies. We didn't have cable. Um, and so we watched what we could. Uh, when we had cable and then it was off and then like I remember specifically season five me and my mom we went to my aunt and uncle's house my, my uncle was a big fan and we went to my aunt and uncle's house every Thursday uh, for season five and we were watching Smallville with them so you know my mom was watching the show my mom was into the show uh, she didn't see I don't think she see, saw the whole thing because you know I was done moved out by the time the show ended but um, 
yeah, uh, she watched it. We watched Smallville together. Um, so I'm definitely going to say, hey, Ma, you know, <laughs> you got to check this out. Like, you know, just something something we've always shared over the years. <laughs> Look up in the sky.